Hi, this is Liz with the Bozeman Public Library. This episode of Abandoned Towns of Montana's Past will look at Rocky Point, the ghost town on the Missouri River. Rocky Point, or Wilder, Wilder's Landing, or Wilder's Ferry, was a small town on the Missouri River breaks in what is now Fergus County. The town developed due to its location. It was a natural fording point in the river that was used by migrating bison and later people. Rocky Point was just below the mouth of Rock Creek. The bottom of the river at this point is more rock than the heavy sticky clay, and the low point in the river made it easier to ford. Prior to western expansion, the ford was used by bison herds and local tribes. The Missouri breaks were a very difficult section of the river for travel. The land around the river is steeply eroded badlands with limited river access. Commerce in Rocky Point ebbed and flowed as new gold finds, technology, and freight routes changed. During the 1860s, Gold Rush, which brought thousands of new migrants to Montana, the Missouri River was the main passageway for people and freight. The first camp at the crossing was a woodhawk yard. They supplied wood for the passing steamboats and harvested the cottonwood from the groves along the river. The first mention of Rocky Point was in 1868. The train didn't reach all the way into Montana yet, so Rocky Point became an alternative for hauling freight. It was unloaded, then went up the river on smaller boats or overland to Fort McGinnis, another 63 miles, or to mining camps in the Judith Mountains to the south, where gold was found in 1880 or the Little Rocky Mountains in the north, where finds were, were made in 1884. The residents of the area found work on the steamboats, mining, ranching, as woodhawks, or as hide hunters. Buffalo hides were used for belting and machinery. Hide hunters searched the Montana prairie and hunted the bison to near extinction. Rocky Point was one of the spots where hides were shipped out and hunters congregated. By 1883, there were so few buffalo left that the commercial market ended and the ford became a crossing point for driving cattle through. In 1869, the Carroll Trail was built to supply Helena. Rocky Point was on this trail. In 1873, the log cabins that were originally built at Carroll, just below on the river, were moved to Rocky Point because the river was eroding the bank under the town site. In the 70s, Rocky Point didn't receive much traffic and nearly all the freight was local. Rocky Point became a low water stop, but most steamboats continued to a little further up the river to Cow Island, which had a better freight route to Fort Bennington. A merchant named C.A. Broadwater set up shop near Rocky Point in 1882. He named his trading post Wilder after Amherst Wilder in St. Paul, Minnesota. The Wilder name is attached to the post office, and the town also became known as Wilder's Landing. A telegraph office opened in Rocky Point at Broadwater's Trading Post. The line consisted of 310 miles and ran from Fort Buford in the Dakota Territories to Fort McGinnis to Rocky Point. The line was built by Army troops and the extension to Helena was never completed. In 1885, the town had a store, hotel, two saloons, feed stable, blacksmith, ferry which was run by Jimmy Taylor. The store was run by R.A. Ritchie. And a man named M.F. March owned a hotel and a bar and ran a warehouse. Rocky Point was the area's voting place and the post office was, was established in 1886. The Missouri Badlands runs for hundreds of miles along the river. There were several territorial claims on the stretch, but it was remote, far from county seats, and law enforcement. Rocky Point attracted some unsavory individuals as well. It was remote, hard to get to, and the easy access to a river crossing made it ideal for outlaws. Outlaws masqueraded as bison hunters, woodhawks, or traders. Large ranches in the area attracted cattle and horse rustlers. A common method for the thieves was to drive the stolen animals to remote areas in the breaks, change their brands, and cross the river to be sold. Horses were more popular as a stolen commodity because they were faster than cattle. Thieves would range as far north as Canada and as far south as Wyoming, and the wrestlers would rendezvous it at the mouth of the Muscle Shell River, Rocky Point, and at Wolf Point. By 1884, the local ranchers had had enough of the thieving. When a prospector had his mare stolen after being scammed into providing aid for a stranded traveler, Granville Stewart organized a strike force that ventured into the breaks and either hung or shot everyone suspected of wrestling. Casualties from the strike force are estimated to be between 13 and 35, 
but most suspect the death toll to be around 18 to 20. The original thief was taken to the DHS ranch where he was given supper, he played the violin, and then he was hung in a grove of cottonwood trees in the morning. Afterwards, rustling in the area declined. When the Northern Pacific completed railroad tracks in 1883 through southern Montana, the steamboat traffic headed towards Fort Benton reduced drastically. The Great Northern Railroad reached Helena in 1887, which effectively ended the riverboat era, and Rocky Point's prestige. It's estimated that 120 people resided in Wilder in 1886. The last boat leaving Rocky Point for Fort Benton left in 1888. Then the saloon burned down and the merchant left. In 1886, 53 votes were cast in the local election. In 1888, only 21. When Montana became a state in 1889, Rocky Point was originally part of Shoto County, but all the land south of the Missouri in Shoto was sold to the Fergus County for $2,500. Fort McGinnis was abandoned in 1890, and another avenue of commerce to Rocky Point left with it. At the end of the century, Rocky Point was a ferry crossing, a store, and a post office. There was a saloon, but the population and commerce was greatly reduced by the 20th century. The original post office was moved into a home, and a small country store was set up there as well. During Montana's pioneering age at the turn of the century, homesteaders settled in the area, but it wasn't the easiest place to be. Life in Rocky Point was hard. There were very few gardens, and meals were supplemented with hunting. The produce brought on the steamboats already belonged to others and wasn't available for the local populace to purchase. Until the 1930s, Rocky Point served as a post office and a watering hole for the local homesteading community. But when the ferry stopped in the 1920s, the community faded away. In 1929, Elmer Turner dismantled the ferry and used the wood for a roof and to support some of the few buildings left in town. As a ford and river crossing, by the 1920s, it was no longer needed. In the 1930s, Rocky Point was picked as a potential site for a bridge over the Missouri, which would have revived the town. A large picnic was held to promote the site in June of 1930, but then the Great Depression happened, and the project was put on hold and then discarded after a few years. In the late 30s, the Army Corps of Engineers purchased the land and condemned what remained in anticipation of the Fort Peck Dam. A fire destroyed the post office in November of 1930, and it was decommissioned entirely in 1939. The last election where Rocky Point was a polling place was in 1942, and that polling place was in the Little Crooked Schoolhouse. Today, some deteriorating structures remain, and the town is part of the Charles M. Russell's National Wildlife Refuge, operated by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The town site is visitable, but the roads are rough and impassable when wet. If you want to learn more about Montana's pioneering history, check out these books from the library. Next month, we'll be looking at Diamond City.